Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today. I appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to listen to me. So yes, as Fiona mentioned, I am Alex Galino. I am photographer, author, and educator of The Abandoned. And I will explain that as we go through the evening. And tonight we're going to be discussing my new, my, uh, this was my second book, Garden State of Decay, discarded, Garden State of Decay, discarded New Jersey. Thank you again for all of you coming here. So this first photo here, I must admit, this is the first, only photo in this um, slide deck today that is not actually in New Jersey. This is a, a self-portrait. I don't do many of those at all. And, uh, but I had a friend with me that day. Um, my friend Annie was with me so she could help me set this shot up. This is actually an old abandoned Marine hospital out in Staten Island. And uh, as you can see, they've got some very old style with the wooden chairs here, the old um, wheelchairs. And it was, uh, it, it just was too amazing of a spot to pass it up and not uh, photograph it, of course, right? So, um, as I mentioned, we're here to, today to discuss Garden State of Decay, discarded New Jersey. And when I was writing this book, there were so many things that came up and I was like, what, what is behind this book? You know, what, what are the thoughts that come into my head when I think of this book? And it, it's so many words. So I actually had to, you know, think this out and work this out. And here are just some of the words that would pop into my head, adventure, friendships, injury, unfortunately, um, just excitement, expression, feelings, active, mystery. Mystery, of course, is very, high up on there because that's what would draw me out to these places in the first place. They, to me, held a, mem uh, a mystery. So I wanted to desperately uncover that. So I put feeling, I put purpose. There's something here. What I do is called urban exploration. Um, the kids call it urbex for short. And what that is, is basically visiting abandoned buildings or ruins or anything like that and just documenting it because obviously a lot of our history gets lost over the years um and and there's some details that are in these old buildings and these old buildings have so many stories to tell you know old hospitals old churches um homes even they have stories and they matter and these stories matter and so i, I at least to me I am a very curious person by heart, uh, you know, um, in my heart, I've always been a very curious person. And so I'm one of those when if I see that old abandoned factory when we're driving down the road, I'm curious, like what happened over there or this old barn? Why was that barn um, discarded? You know what I mean? And so I, I put all these words out here because it has just been an, an amazing experience for me discovering these places. Um, I even have the word mental health in there. It's been great for my mental health. Sometimes we have curiosities or, or yearnings or whatever you want to call it in our lives. And, and we almost don't know what to do with that energy. And I'm sure at least a couple of you can relate to that, right? And this is how I have found, you know, the best way to use my energy and to express myself and and have that adventure and consequently I would have a lot of stories and there's a lot of hiking and and of course there's some fear with it right and of course sometimes there's going to be an injury or two um but to me you know that's living life that's living life to the fullest is just exploring what's out there and seeing what stories have been forgotten and have yet to be told right so this first slide here is, um, I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey. So of course I had to write a book about New Jersey. And this was one of the earlier places I had visited that is featured in my book. And this is um, St. Bridget's Church in Jersey City. And I obviously loved this church. I mean, like, as you can see through these photos here, it's like the amazing Gothic architecture, the amazing colors here with the pink and the bright blue and the bright yellow. And it's just amazing. And to just see that against a backdrop where 
you know, everything is kind of looks like it's falling apart and it can really use a lot of love there when it comes at least to the flooring anyway, right? And as you can see, the pews have already been taken out of this church. And the pretty amazing thing is, is why I love this church so much is that um, not only is it in my hometown, but is that they were actually smart enough to not knock down this amazing, beautiful building. And they ended up repurposing it for condos. Um, so, you know, downtown Jersey City, in case you aren't aware, has become very up and coming and it is like the place to be now. It is also the place with the highest rents, I think, in the entire country. Somebody can feel free to ch fact check me on that, but it's right up there with New York City. And what was, was really great was that they decided to use this space and make it a living space for people, right? So I'm not sure how many condos this ended up being, but what is so amazing is like, imagine this is your apartment and now you're staring out this stained glass windows or, and, you know, and all these uh, Gothic archways and everything. And it's just, I love it. You know what I mean? So I think it's important to document these things before they go away. Fortunately, this, this beautiful church was saved. Um, so now here we have this, um, let me see. So this is a dining train car. You don't see those too much anymore, right? Um, I'm sure if you're probably then younger than maybe about 30, you probably never even heard of a dining train car, right? Um, and I can't say they're terribly familiar to me either, but um, this one is out there. I believe it's right off of Route 46. It's been a few years since I've been there. And as you can see, so here's a dining train car and to the right there, you can see they, they built a structure to attach to that. And that in that structure in the background there, there's actually a bar in there and um, they built a small catering hall. And then there was this dining train car. And I thought like, wow, this is not something you would see today. And so of course I wanted to visit it. So once I got inside, here's what it looked like, right? I was absolutely blown away by the fact that they still had those, um, I guess we'll call them balances, right? So they had the balances up there. They still had tables. They still had tablecloths. They still had old wine bottles and, and uh, you know, place settings and all kinds of stuff like that. And I think that was amazing. Um, sadly, this place is in very rough shape today. It doesn't look anything like this, but I think this was a pretty amazing place and and I just needed to capture that. I believe that the people that own this house, they couldn't keep up with the upkeep. And I think that's what happened. And then um there wasn't any interested buyers, at least not that um uh, not from what I researched. And so unfortunately this place has gotten pretty beat up over the years. Right. Now this place here, now this is a sanitarium that was shut down, I believe in the 70s. And this is out in the western part of New Jersey, so quite far from Hudson County, where I'm usually based here. And as you can see here on the left there, that is one of the morgue tables. That was the morgue, right? Um, an unfortunate reality of hospitals. And then on the right here, as you can see, I mentioned this was a sanitarium, so I'm sure if anybody knows about you know, uh, health care back then or their history, they're probably well aware of the number one treatment for tuberculosis, of course, was fresh air, right? So this is one of those open porches here that we're looking at on the right. And the beds would have been lined out of here, or at least some chairs. They wanted you to sit there and get that fresh air and get that sunshine. You can see the doors open there on the left. And so when I saw this place, it was absolutely remarkable. It's been sitting there for quite some time emptied. And actually they wound up building a hospital right next to it. Um, that hospital ended up getting shut down by Chris Christie some years ago. But I think it's pretty amazing that it's wonderful that we don't need tuberculosis hospitals anymore, right? We don't need sanitariums, not as much anymore anyway, certainly. And, and I think this is an important part of our history. Obviously, we all went through COVID and we started to become very aware of infectious diseases and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting to watch the history of medicine as it evolved over the years. Right. Oh, just a quick uh, reminder, everyone, in case you have any um, questions, we're going to be doing them all at the end. So please hold on to your questions. We'll do them at the end. Now, right here, um, 
what we're doing, uh, what I'm looking at here and what you're looking at is transportation. I absolutely love abandoned transportation. I actually kind of did a little soul searching on this and was trying to figure out why do I love transportation so much? You know, abandoned transportation anyway. And and I realized I just love the idea of being able to get up and go. It's amazing. You know, we're not in the times of the uh, 4T model, <laughs> you know, where we have these old cars and we can only go so far. I mean, today, so much technology is available to us. You know, I could be on the other side of the world by tomorrow, right? And I think that's what's exciting to me about abandoned transportation. These were machines that were to take you somewhere else. It was literally transporting you somewhere else, right? So we've got this uh, a plane here on the left here. Obviously it's a very small plane. And um, I think it was maybe, you know, uh, a four seater. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a plane expert. And then on the right here, we see there's a couple of boats. Now the one on the top right, that boat was, found in Seabright, New Jersey. So if anybody's from the shore area, you might remember this boat. I believe it was in 2021. And what had happened back then, well, actually it might still be the law today. So I don't want to see back then. But in New Jersey, at least not, that's what it was around 2021 anyway, the law is if you have an emergency you are able to abandon your boat and you don't have to be responsible for it, right? There's an emergency. You're just going to abandon your boat. And that's exactly what happened with the person that owned this boat. So the name of the boy, boat was French, and I'm sure I'm going to say this wrong, so feel free to <laughs> correct me. Um, and But it was called Joyeux, okay? And this boat was coming back from not too far away. I want to say like, I think it was like Maryland. No, 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 no. I think he was on his way to Brooklyn. I'm not really sure. I forgot the story now. But this boat wound up hitting a sandbar. And unfortunately, this boat did not have insurance either. So what they did, the, the person that was sailing this boat is obviously he had to abandon ship, right? I mean, he has to save himself. He doesn't have to worry about the ship. And fortunately, he got home safe, but the boat got stuck there in Seabright, New Jersey. And it was stuck there in the um, in the middle of the summer. Yes, of course, it was the pandemic. So traffic in the summer on the beach wasn't as heavy as it normally would be. But this, you know, decent sized boat was kind of taking up the spotlight on this beautiful beach there in Seabright. And uh, of course, the town of Seabright did not want to be on the hook for removing the boat. But that's the way New Jersey laws work. The owner was not responsible because that's the way our laws are written. And so after much debate, Seabright finally found some way to come up with the funds and eventually remove that ship. But I went out there one morning. I know you can't tell from that photo, but it was pretty early in the morning. It was about like six or seven in the morning. And I went out there to photograph it before, you know, I figured one day I'd never see her again. And sure enough, a few months later, she was gone. Sometimes um, funny enough, I'll photograph something and it's gone just a few days later. So that's why I try not to miss any opportunities to photograph anything I find exciting because I have literally no idea how long it'll be there, right? Um, on the bottom right here, speaking of, I have no idea how long boats will be there. The boat on the bottom right here, that is a photograph of a boat in Seaside Park. And if anybody lives, again, in the shore area, especially in the seaside area, you might remember seeing this boat. This boat had been there for years. And despite all my research, um, I would even reach out to local libraries, maritime societies, all kinds of organizations trying to find someone who could give me a story about this boat on the bottom right there. And no one could tell me anything. So finally, one day I decided to go out and photograph this boat. It had been there forever, like I mentioned, many years. And so it just happened to be um, the same time where the state of New Jersey decided to do some controlled birds, which are in the background there. Um, so in case you're wondering what that fire is, it has nothing to do with the boat. <laughs> and, um, and the funny thing was, I was I remember actually being annoyed when I went to go see this boat and the fire was going. I'm like, well, that's going to distract from the boat and the boat is the focus here and I'm, I'm trying to get this 
at some semi good lighting, even though you can see the, the weather wasn't cooperating. This was around sunset. And I have so many people that came back to me and they're like, I love this photo because of the fire. So sometimes, you know, uh, you never know what's working out for you and you don't realize it at the time. Um, so I was very excited about this boat, spent all that time researching it. Nobody could tell me anything about this boat. And as a matter of fact, one of the maritime societies I talked to, they were like, if you find out something about this boat, let us know. And thanks to Reddit, in case anybody's uh, a big fan of social media and the internet, thank you to Reddit. Somebody finally said that this boat was stuck there from Hurricane Sandy in 2012. It got washed ashore and it just sat there for so many years. And I was photographing it nine years later and no one could tell me anything. And needless to say, today that boat is long gone. <laughs> so I'm very glad I got to photograph that boat after all those years. Now here's an, uh, an airplane that I absolutely love. It is up in Passaic County. Uh, I want to say it's West Milford, and it says this plane tried to kill me. No joke. This boat, uh, this boat, this plane actually did try to kill me. So I had heard about this plane numerous times. I spent a lot of time researching how to find this plane because nobody could really tell me exactly where it was. And that's because it was out in the middle of like a forest. You know what I mean? So it's not like it's on the corner of Maine and, and you know, Maple or something like that. So I ventured out to as close as I could by car to find this plane. And somebody had told me when I was going out there, like, you know what, be careful. It's, um, you know, it tends to get really muddy. And it's a little messy, so just be careful. And I planned on going that there one day um, by myself. At the last minute, I had a friend doing me. And uh, thank God I did because <laughs> this plane tried to kill me. What my friend who told me about this area failed to mention was that this was actually a swamp. Um, it's basically a swamp. I was sinking in. I had sunk to the point, and you'll see this in the book, um, I had sunk to the point of mid thigh, literally the earth was swallowing me up to say I was terrified <laughs> is putting it mildly. Um, so when a lot of people ask me about abandoned stuff, they're like, aren't you worried about, you know, crazy people or broken floors or stuff like this? I didn't think about nature itself <laughs> going to see this abandoned building. And this was basically a swamp area, as I mentioned, and I was literally standing on this plane wing, as you can see right here, taking that photo, because it was the only way I wasn't sinking into the earth. Very scary day. Fortunately, my friend helped me, you know, it was very dramatic, like something you would see in a movie brings over like a branch to like, you know, uh, from a tree to pull me out of the mud pit that I was in. And uh, needless to say, those boots had to go into the wash immediately. But um, this was a really exciting story. Um, it was an exciting visit, I should say. But um, the story is, this is actually a military jet. And they had run into some, obviously, mechanical issues. And they had to make a crash landing here out in the forest. And the way they describe this forest, well, the way the media describe this forest is snake-filled swamp, blah, blah, blah. I can assure you, I did not see one snake there the entire time. Now, of course, were there snakes when it landed? Maybe. I don't know. Um, so what the military did was they came back and removed the engine from this jet and wind up just leaving it there. And I find that a lot of times people are just abandoning, whether it is a piece of transportation, a house, whatever, because it's just easier than dealing with removing it or whatever they have to do with it, remediating it. It's just easier to just leave it there. So this bit, this plane is genuinely abandoned out there in the forest. Um, okay, I don't know why this isn't working. Here we go. Where did it start? It's a common question I get. Like, how did you get started with these um, abandoned locations? What got you so interested? And I always like to go back to, you know, you can find a lot of interesting things on the internet. And I had found a very interesting guy on YouTube. This actually was, uh, um, this was back in, I want to say like around 2018 or so, 19. And I was feeling kind of stuck. 
And I didn't like being stuck. I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of things I want to see, I want to do, you know, and I didn't really know how to successfully use that energy. So I actually just went to start looking up interesting things in New Jersey, right? And I was like, I'm sure there's plenty of things here in New Jersey that I haven't gone to see. And, and they're probably amazing, you know, um, and I would love to go see them and have new experiences. I'm all about the new experiences. Right. And so when I started searching this, I stumbled upon a YouTuber named Patrick and he was doing all these videos. He was a avid um, um, bike guy. He would ride his bicycle all over. I mean, he goes out for 25 miles like it's for me and you to walk around the block nothing for him and he would bike a lot of old trails throughout new jersey and he would stumble upon these old locations like old houses old camps you name it and he would just find these old places just sitting there rotting away wherever they are right and i believe this was one of the locations anyway so this is an old camp da found down in ocean county and um as you can see, I took a few photos here. We were looking at a, a very exciting sofa, <laughs> and, uh, toilet, and chimney. And so where did it start? started with the toilet, folks, okay? So people love to ask me that. And I was like, listen, it wasn't that glamorous when I started. I was just so excited to find these places that I wasn't really thinking of creatively, how can I make this look very interesting? I was just running around trying to document it. So do I think this toilet is particularly exciting? No. But was it exciting for me to be there that day? Absolutely. It was amazing. It was this massive property and actually it's open to the public. So anyone can go today. Uh, I believe it's in Tom's River. You can look this up and you can walk around there today. There's still a few structures left over. Obviously the place is getting beat up over time. So here's, um, Here's a funny thing that I just discovered yesterday. Um, I had, of course, done my PowerPoint ahead of time. But um, as you can see here, we've got a few photos. We've got this photo on the left. And that is in a, I think it's in a state park in Maine. So this is publicly accessible, right? The one in the middle here and the one on the left, these are from a very old camp in Sussex County. All right. So we're shifting from down the shore to very far north. And if you know anything about Sussex County, it's pretty darn rural out there. Right. <clears throat> and I found out yesterday, I got a reminder yesterday. Thank you, Facebook uh, memories. And apparently yesterday, October 22nd, 2016, was the very first day I went out exploring. And so the two photos on the right here, that's me and my friends. I covered her face um, for privacy, of course. And that was the first photo I had ever taken, first selfie I had ever taken at an abandoned place. And in, by the middle photo here, what this was is you can still see there's some stuff left in this space, and but it had been closed for a, quite a long time now, at least 10, 20 years. And this was an old summer camp. And when I was doing some research, I even found out that, um, oh, I'm blanking on a second. Oh, there it is. Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane went to uh, summer camp here. It was a summer camp, usually for Jewish children, and they would come here in the summer and, you know, have a great time, which I thought was really cool that I got to go to Nathan Lane summer camp. So it's kind of interesting once you start doing this research and you can start finding out all these cool things. Now, here's a photo that is Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. I lied. This is another photo not from New Jersey. So I have two photos not from New Jersey. Um, and then on the left there, that's another photo from that camp. On the right there, that is a photo from that sanitarium I was telling you before. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. So please forgive me. I didn't memorize this. <laughs> and a lot of people are always saying to me, what kind of places do you visit? What kind of places can I go to? Right. And these are some of the places, maybe not the two on the opposite ends there, but the one in the middle, that's certainly a place you can go. And there's so many amazing details, like the photo I took on the left. I was just amazed that the ceiling caved in and all this garbage fell through. And I just wanted to take that picture. Um, so you never know what you're going to discover, what grabs your interest. 
Now here's a, a pretty well-known place, uh, and maybe some of you might remember this since it's not too far from uh, Somerset County anyway. Maybe it is in Somerset County. Somebody let me know in the comments, okay? This, I believe, was, I want to say Scotch Plains, but I, not, I might not be right about that. It might be Greenbrook, something like that. And this was Bowcraft, um, Bowcraft Amusements, right? And this was out on Route 22. And if you're at least as old as me, and for the record, I am, uh, I'll say I'm Gen X. <laughs> I had visited here so many times when I was a child. My parents used to bring us here quite often to bro Bowcraft. And um, I'm sure at least a few of you on this call today have probably visited there at least a couple of times yourself. And I heard that they were closing. They were actually auctioning off all the rides. They were auctioning off everything they could. And um, they actually started out as an archery which I didn't know that. And then eventually, and I guess that's where the name Bowcraft comes from, right? Um, eventually they started adding a few more amusements. As you can see, we got the bump cars on the right there. On the left here was one of these basketball games where you would presumably win some prize, right? Um, over here, we've got the pizza palace with funnel cakes. You know what? All that sounds pretty good right now. Um, but I had heard from a friend that this place was closing. So, of course, I had to go see it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's that's a little more personal to me. This isn't just some other random abandoned building. I, I've been to Bowcraft many times as a child. And so this one hit a little closer to home. So, of course, I had to go see it. And as you can see, the sun is coming up there in the background. This was definitely around sunrise. I uh, It's a very open place, Bowcraft, at least at the time, right? It was just a wide open place. And so I decided to drive up there one morning when I knew Bowcraft's days were numbered. And I decided, okay, let me go at sunrise so I can have the least amount of people around. Nobody should be bothering me. I just want to go around and document some photos, right? You know, and just have some nice memories um, of the place that I used to spend all this time at. And in case you did go to Bowcraft, you might remember this little track here where they had the little train going around and who doesn't love like a little cute train going around amusement park, right? Um, so of course, Bowcraft had seen better days and I was very glad to have visited it while I did because today it is housing. They have, I went by the other day, not on purpose, I was driving somewhere and I didn't even recognize the Bowcraft location because as I mentioned in my book, they were turning this into housing. Well, today it is very much housing. Um, I think there's at least 40 or 50 units. It might be more than that. But um, it, it ended up being a sizable property. Um, fun fact, if you look up the Bowcraft website today, it is still up and operational. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know who's paying for all that, but it's still there. It's still working. Now, the number one question I get here is, how do you find out about these places, right? And I cannot stress enough about networking. So, you know, whether you find people on YouTube, you find people on Instagram, you're, you're literally talking to people on the phone here, right? So this is an amazing, and I say literally because we don't talk on the phone anymore. At least we try to avoid that, right? Um, now, you can see this photo here. It is not my photo. It is a photo by a good friend of mine named Alex Codella. And we went out one day, uh, I believe this was in New York, and we went out one day and we were going to visit this old house that had supposedly been left to the devices, you know, to, to nature, I guess I should say, for at least 10 years or so. And so we're like, okay, let's go take a look at it, right? And so here were me and my friends and how did I make these friends? From literally the internet. Okay, these are my internet friends, but they were very, they are very good friends. And I've had some amazing experiences with them. I'm all the way on the left in case you're interested there, right? And the rest of these friends are all friends I made from the internet. So not everything on the internet is bad. And it was just, I, the gentleman in the middle there, what he did is he started noticing my photos on Instagram and he wound up reaching out to me because he saw I had a common interest with him. So we just got to talking. And one night I told him I was going to go check out this hospital the next day. Well, he said, you know what? Give me a call 
I want to tell you about that place. So I was like, okay, great. Yeah, you've got some insight. That'd be awesome. I went up talking to this gentleman for about two, three hours, easily until about one, two in the morning. It was a very late night. And, um, and, and he was just a fountain of information. And I realized a lot of people that do this they're just people that want to explore. They're, they're people who love to do photos, you know, to be photographers. They, they love taking their photos. They love their experiences and they just want to share that. And they also like to find other people who share that common interest. If you ask any of my closest friends, when I ask them if they want to go to an abandoned building, no, that's a, that's a no from them. Generally, they don't want to do it. And I don't blame them, right? Um, it's not the safest thing to do. Um, there's too many, you know, there's people, there's wild animals, it's anything. I always like to describe it as going hiking by yourself. Um, people generally tell me that's not safe, even though I've hiked by myself many times. But you just have to keep your wits about you, right? You know, make sure you're prepared. Make sure you have, I don't know, water and snacks. Make sure somebody knows where you are. Make sure you're keeping your eyes open. Make sure you're looking around, making sure you're safe. It's just like anything else, right? Um, and so I had fallen into this great group of friends here and we all shamed, shared the same passion for exploring abandoned places. And so my friend Alex you know, hung behind so we could take this photo of us. As you can see, it was just early fall there. And uh, we were going off to go see this house. And um, it was uh, it was quite an interesting day. But I loved this photo when I saw it. And I was like, this is why I do what I do. I love these adventures. And I love these adventures with these people. Because no matter what, I knew I'd be okay. I I, I don't know. That's the best way to describe it. I just felt safe. I had found my tribe. So a lot of people ask me, okay, okay, okay. I don't want to do all that. That sounds, it sounds too much. I don't want to make all these friends with people on the internet. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, maybe I just want to do this on a much more local, easier level, right? So here we are, and we're looking at Gateway National Recreation Area. For those that are local to New Jersey, we more we uh, know this really as Sandy Hook, right? Um, this is National Park Service property, and I mention that because obviously that means it's government property. We don't want to do anything crazy on government property. So there's so many amazing buildings down there in Sandy Hook, plus the um, United States' oldest lighthouse down there in Sandy Hook. So that might be worth a visit and they have all these old barracks and everything that were left over from when it was being used as a military base and so there's plenty to explore there and obviously it's open to the public so go have fun would I enter these buildings without permission absolutely not because like I said it's national park property right but it's easily accessible to folks I pulled up right up to this house and I snapped that picture there are plenty of structures here with just amazing architecture, so much history. You can see most of these windows here are covered up and that's because they're covered up by wind, uh, what are called preservation panels. So that's not a door or anything like that. That's actually a covering to protect the windows in the buildings. Here's another one, completely open to the public. Big, rusty, as you can see, it's some kind of um, uh, structure. It's, uh, what do I wanna say here? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> plenty of over. Um, but Big Rusty is this uh, art made by Thomas Dambo. And this is found in Haynesport, New York. That's um, on the south part of Jersey, if anyone's interested. This was a Danish artist. Uh, he is a Danish artist and he has done multiple of these kind of um, structures here. What he does is he takes old abandoned materials or at least for this particular um uh statue here what he did is he took old materials from the building that you can see in the background there and he created big rusty what's what's really so and when you go to this if you look it up online it's very easy to find this place this isn't a big secret um if you find this place you'll have to go all the way in the back and you'll pass about eight signs that say no trespassing or private property which is very disconcerting 
and uh, but it is open to the public okay you have to go all the way in the back and as you can see big rusty is out here just enjoying his day and then there's like this structure back back here this was some kind of old um factory or something like that i'm not too clear on the details for this this is a more recent thing this is not something i mentioned in the book i wanted to bring this up in case anybody wants to see something you know on their own and you can actually enter this structure it is structurally safe um, I wouldn't go touching anything, right? Um, there's plenty of rusted metal, lead paint and all that probably around the space. So I wouldn't touch anything. Um, but you can certainly walk around this property. It's a good sized property, but it's something fun to see, something different to see and completely legal, of course, right? Now here, this park doesn't get enough love, I think. Ramapo Mountain State Forest. This is very far in North New Jersey. This is Van Slyke castle ruins and this is oakland new jersey it's an amazing hike up there i absolutely love hiking so i i don't need an excuse to go hiking but if you got ruins up on the top of your mountain there then i want to go see them and i realize mountain should come with an asterisk in new jersey listen our highest peak is what 1800 feet so this isn't colorado this isn't utah <laughs> this is what we have here in jersey but there's this amazing property up there when you get to the top of the mountain and you can see the Vance Light Castle ruins and there's plenty of photo opportunities up there. I believe the old pool is up there, an old carriage house. And uh, it's a pretty amazing hike. First of all, definitely one of my favorite hikes in New Jersey and uh, a pretty amazing experience. You'll still see like there's some old pieces from like a boiler there. It's it's pretty awesome experience altogether. Um, so in case you're thinking, I, I don't wanna walk up to these places. I have no interest in doing that. Well, here we go with the very fancy, don't, don't judge me on my drone <laughs> video capabilities. This isn't my strong suit, okay? But here's a place I went to this past summer with a dear friend. And this is in, I'm pretty sure this was Detroit. And what this was, you can see that video is just so exciting, right? Um, so you can, um, this was an old place in Detroit. It was a observatory and it had been abandoned for a very long time. It turns out it's like smack dab, even though there's a road in the back there, right behind me here is a ton of houses. This is basically in a neighborhood. And so maybe, you know, you look at a place like this and you're like, well, that doesn't seem safe. I don't want to walk in there. Well, that's okay. That's why God created drones, right? So you can always go around and see places like that, which I've done plenty of times. Some places are simply not accessible on foot and you've got to take out the drone to have some fun. Here's uh, another example, not New Jersey, but this is again, to give you an idea of how you can find these places. So this is, what is this called? um the boat graveyard that's what it's called the boat graveyard out there in staten island now this is a very hard trek to get there on foot and i wouldn't recommend it at all all right i do not recommend breaking the law i do not recommend trespassing so we're really clear but i always knew that these old boats were out here and they were all kind of just like rotting away and becoming one with the earth out there and I really wanted to see them so what I did is I found a place I was with a friend um and we pulled over and I sent up the drone and I shoved it out there to the water this is the kill van call this is the water between Bayonne and um Staten Island and I could not believe the amount of of boats out here they, this was just a fraction of them but it was so cool to see this because i can only just imagine like the history behind this boat are they shipping boats probably but still i'm sure they have plenty of interesting stories to tell and one day you know we might not be able to see these boats anymore you know the water is rising maybe we won't get to see that anymore so i wanted to always document these things because like i said you might not see them anymore now here is a beautiful beautiful castle. It was called the Dundas Castle, also known as the Craig E. Clare House. Um, it goes by a few names. And as you can see, this looks um, pretty gothic here. And we've got these beautiful windows here and this beautiful property. And it's, it seems somewhat maintained, right? But unfortunately, this place is very off limits. And I knew I had wanted to see it forever. By the way, this is up in New York. Um, 
this is just another place where I flew with my drone, right? And I had wanted to see this place forever. I knew it was very difficult to enter this property, not legal anyway. Um, and so I decided once again, let me bust out my drone so I can see some cool stuff of a property that I'll never be able to visit in person, right? Well, probably not anyway. But just to give you an idea, you see here, so this is where I was. You see that road there on the right side of the photo there? Well, I was in that area. I was on that road with my friend and we flew up the drones and flew them over here just to get an idea of what the property looked like and everything because I knew I wouldn't be able to get to see it on foot. And I was so glad I did that. It is a, a beautiful structure and it's amazing building with such an interesting history. Um, and I can't get into all that now because then I'd be talking for another 30 minutes. But that was the amazing thing about finding these places. I loved looking into the stories behind them. Um, I find that truth is far more interesting than fiction sometimes. Um, here's another location. This is down in Virginia. These are the famous president heads. They used to be part of a, um, of a location called President Park. President's Park, excuse me. And all these bus were out at this park and then they would have, you know, plaques in front of them and it would tell you the highlights of that particular presidency and all that. Well, this park was not that successful. It wind up shutting down. And this guy with all this land right here decided, hey, I'm going to save these bus. I'm going to put them on my property. And he paid to get them all moved to his property and they're all stacked up right here he put those three in the front because he thought those were the most uh interesting um so of course we have george washington and lincoln and then he just liked the uh outfit <laughs> the other guy so um he picked out his favorite ones put them in front but this is an amazing location they do multiple tours throughout the year so you can always look this up this is down in virginia um I forget the name of the exact town, but you can find this very easily. If you look up President Heads in Virginia, you can find when they're doing their next tours. Here's another thing. This is actually New Jersey. This was a like a yacht, basically, stuck in this tiny, I guess we will call that channel. And this boat has been stuck there forever. I still am trying to look into the story about this, um, but I wanted to see it. Obviously, it's not something I can get to on foot. So I flew my drone over there and I finally got to see this beauty because, of course, I love abandoned transportation, right? Um, but before, as I wrap up my talk here today, I feel like I'm, I'm going a little bit long, so I'll make it quick. These, I, I don't want to end this talk without mentioning that I am, in fact, an educator, which that means a tour guide, a docent, whatever you want to call it, for the abandoned hospitals at Ellis Island, the United States Public Health Service Hospital, number 43. So here's some of the photos from my actual workplace. I think my workplace looks better than yours. What do you think? And um, there's some more photos here. I obviously have quite a passion for learning about the history of these places. Um, Ellis Island has very quickly won over my heart. There's so many, I always say there's a million stories there and I only get to tell you about like 20 of them. Um, so this is an amazing place to visit. It is called the Hard Hat Tour. If you want to come down and see some abandoned places in a safe environment, I'll be there all ready to tell you some stories. So um, I would like to open it up to questions right now. Fiona's in charge, so I'm going to let her do that. But if you have any questions, um, you can see here, here's my website if you want to visit that. Um, I'm, of course, on social media. Basically, any social media site you can find, you can find me at Starlet Lexi. I didn't want to list them all, but that's some of them. If you have any questions after this is over and you want to email me later on, my email is there on the bottom.